In this video, we're going to focus on distinguishing pure substances from mixtures. Now here's a question for you. What exactly is a pure substance and how is it different from a mixture? A pure substance has constant composition. Pure substances can be elements, they can be compounds, but they always have a definite and constant composition. A mixture is basically a combination of multiple pure substances, and a mixture can have variable composition. So for example, let's say if we have the element helium. Is that a pure substance or is that a mixture? Helium is a pure substance. If you have a single element, it will always be a pure substance. Now what about H2O, water? Is water a pure substance or a mixture? Now water is a compound. It's not a pure element like helium. Helium is only made up of one type of atom. Water is made up of two types of atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. So therefore, water is a compound. Compounds are made up of two or more different atoms. If you have a single compound, it's going to be a pure substance. Now what about hydrogen gas? Is that a pure substance or is that a mixture? Hydrogen gas is a pure substance. Like helium, it's a pure element. However, it's slightly different than helium. Helium is composed of single individual atoms. Hydrogen gas is composed of molecules. A molecule is basically a substance that has multiple atoms. So water is a molecule and hydrogen gas is a molecule. The difference though is that water is made up of two different atoms which makes it a compound in addition to being a molecule so you can call it a molecular compound but hydrogen it's only made up of one type of atom which is hydrogen so H2 is a pure element and at the same time it's a molecule so pure elements are made of only one type of atom like helium or hydrogen gas those are pure elements molecules are made up of multiple atoms, two or more atoms. It could be the same type of atom in the case of hydrogen gas, or it can be different types of atoms in the case of water. So whenever you have multiple atoms in an individual particle, it's a molecule. Now, if you have a particle that has different atoms, like water, it's a compound. So I want you to be familiar with those terms. So if you have an individual molecule, an individual atom, a pure element, or a single type of compound, all of these are pure substances. Now, a mixture is simply a combination of multiple pure substances. So, for example, if I have a beaker that has hydrogen gas and helium gas, I now have a mixture. So, let's say if I have nitrogen gas combined with oxygen gas. That is a mixture. I have two pure substances mixed together. Now what about salt water? Is salt water a pure substance or is it a mixture? Salt water is a pure substance. I mean, I take that back, not a pure substance. It's a mixture. Now let's talk about why. Salt water is composed of water and salt. Salt is NaCl, sodium chloride. So individually, pure salt is a pure substance. Water by itself is a pure substance. But when you mix these two together, when you combine them, you now have a mixture. So salt water is a mixture. Now, I briefly mentioned this early in the video, but pure substances, they have a constant composition. A mixture can have a variable composition. And let me illustrate what is meant by that. So I can mix salt with water in different proportions. For example, I can take five grams of table salt and mix it 
with 95 grams of water. So in this case, I have a 5% salt solution. That's 5 grams out of a total of 100 grams of solution. Or I can mix 10 grams of salt with 90 grams of water. So now I have a 10% salt water solution. So as you can see, a mixture, it can have a variable composition. I can have a 5% salt solution, or I can have a 10% salt solution, or a 20% salt solution. I can control the composition of my mixture. Now, a pure substance, the composition is constant. You can't do that. For example, the only thing you can change about a pure substance is the amount of matter. You could change the volume or the mass. I can put, let's say, 10 milliliters of water in this beaker. Let's say it's pure water. Or I could fill it with 20 milliliters of water. So I can change the quantity of water in this beaker, but I can't change the composition. In both cases, it's pure water. It's not mixed with anything else. So this is 100% pure water, and this is 100% pure water. So whenever you have a pure substance, regardless if you have a little or a lot, it's still 100% pure. You cannot change the composition. The only way to change the composition is to create a mixture. Now, if I add salt, it's no longer going to be pure water. It could be 95% pure water. It could be 90% pure water. But once the composition changes, you now have a mixture. You no longer have a pure substance. So remember, a pure substance has a constant composition, but a mixture has a variable composition. Now, another way that you can distinguish a pure substance and a mixture is the way in which you can separate them or break them down into their components. A mixture, you can separate the components of a mixture by means of a physical process. The components of a pure substance, if you have a compound, you can separate it by means of a chemical process. So let's take a Let's take salt water, for example. So imagine if you have a beaker, and there's water, and there's also some salt. You have your sodium ions and your chloride ions. Now, if you were to put this salt water on a stove, or if you add heat to it, what's going to happen? Eventually, when it gets hot enough, all of the water molecules are going to boil off. And then what's going to happen is you're going to be left with this dry solid residue, which is basically table salt, sodium chloride. So by applying heat, you can boil off the water and the solid sodium chloride will remain because it's very difficult to boil off sodium chloride. It has a very, very high melting and boiling point. So you can use a physical process to separate salt from water. Now, it doesn't have to be boiling, which you have to heat it to its boiling point to separate water. Even if you left, let's say, a puddle of salt water, if you left it out in the open in a dry room without raising the temperature, water can evaporate on its own. Perhaps you've placed a puddle of water on a table, and if your AC is on, you'll notice that eventually that small puddle of water is going to evaporate. Evaporation is the process where something that's volatile, like water, it can evaporate without the use of heat. All you need is a dry room. If you want to boil it off, you got to add heat, and water is going to vaporize into a gas, aka steam. But to get back to what we're talking about, you can separate a mixture by means of a physical process. Evaporation, boiling, decantation, filtration, centrifugation, chromatography, all of these are physical processes that can be used to break down a mixture into its components. Now let's talk about a chemical process that can be used to break down a pure substance in the form of a compound. A good example is H2O. Now let's say if you take a beaker 
you add water and you place two metal electrodes. It could be two graphite pieces. Graphite conducts electricity. And let's say you take a 9 volt battery and you connect it with a wire across the graphite electrodes. What do you think is going to happen? Now, pure water doesn't conduct electricity very well. So you may need to add some table salt to it. Once you add salt to water, it conducts electricity a lot better. Now, this is known as electrolysis. Electrolysis is a chemical process that can break down water into its component elements. It can break it down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So at one of these electrodes, hydrogen gas will evolve from it. You'll see these little bubbles uh, bubbling up from the solution. If not, maybe you have a dead 9-volt battery. Maybe you have to increase the voltage. On the other side, you'll see another set of bubbles, which will be oxygen gas. So electrolysis is a chemical process that can break down a compound into its pure elements. In the case of water, it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen. So you can use a chemical process to break down a pure substance into simpler elements. But you can use the physical process to break down the components of a mixture, to separate one component from another. In the case of salt water, if you add heat, you can boil off the water and the salt will remain behind. That's a physical process. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to give you a list of stuff, and I want you to classify it as a pure substance or a mixture. So we're going to go over a lot of examples. Carbon dioxide, dry ice, CO2. Is it a pure substance or a mixture? Carbon dioxide is a compound. Because it's only a single compound, it's a pure substance. Now what about iron metal? Is iron metal a pure substance or is it a mixture? Now iron metal is a pure element. It's a single element, so that makes, that makes it a pure substance. Now what about brass? B-R-A-S-S. -S. Is brass a pure substance or is it a mixture? Now brass is not a pure element. Brass is known as an alloy. An alloy is something that's composed of many metals. In the case of brass, it's composed of copper and zinc. So brass is actually a solid solution of copper and zinc. Now what about air? Is air a pure substance or is it a mixture? Air is a mixture. Air is not composed of just one type of compound or element. Rather, it's a mixture of gases. Air has nitrogen gas, it has oxygen gas, it has carbon dioxide gas, sometimes water vapor, and even some argon gas. So air is a mixture of gases. It's a homogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture where it has uniform composition. A heterogeneous mixture, it does not have that uniform composition. One side could have a, a different composition from another side. Now what about sugar? Is sugar a pure substance or a mixture? Sugar is a pure substance. It's C6H12O6. That's a glucose. Table sugar is sucrose, which is C12. H22011. Perhaps you've learned that in uh, biology class. But table sugar is a pure substance. Now sugar water, that's a mixture of sugar and water. So that's not a pure substance. Now what about 24 karat gold? Is that a pure substance or is that a mixture? 24 karat gold is pure gold and gold is an element so that's a pure substance. Now, if you have like 14 karat gold, that's not a pure element. That's a mixture. It's an alloy like brass. 14 karat gold 
means there's some gold in it, but there's also something else. You could have silver, there could be copper, or another metal inside of it. So 14 karat gold is a mixture of many metals. Now what about rubbing alcohol? Is rubbing alcohol a pure substance or is it a mixture? Rubbing alcohol is a mixture. It's composed of isopropyl alcohol with some water added to it. So if you look at a bottle of rubbing alcohol, it might say it's 70% alcohol. That means the other 30% is water. So it's not pure alcohol. Now let me clear the page. Now what about soda? So let's say if you're drinking a bottle of Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Is soda, is it a pure substance or is it a mixture? Soda is a mixture. It contains water. It contains sugar. It might have some caffeine. So that's a mixture. Now what about milk? Is milk a pure substance or is it a mixture? Milk has water, it has proteins, it has uh, fat molecules, fatty acids. So milk is a mixture. There's multiple substances in milk. Now what about silver metal? Is that a mixture or is that a pure substance? Silver is a pure element which makes it a pure substance. Now what about something called sterling silver? Is that a pure substance or is that a mixture? Sterling silver is a mixture. It's an alloy. It's 92.5% silver and usually about 7.5% copper. So it's a solid solution of two metals. So anytime you have an alloy, it's always going to be a mixture. Now what about seawater? Is seawater a mixture or is that a pure substance? Seawater is basically salt water. You might have some other elements there too, but it's mostly water and sodium chloride with some other stuff. So that's a mixture. Now what about wood, soil, and wine? Go ahead and classify these as mixtures or pure substances. Wood comes from living material like a tree. And things that can grow in nature are usually composed of carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids. So wood is definitely a mixture. It doesn't consist of one type of compound or a pure element. Soil is also a mixture. Soil could have some sand in it, silicon dioxide, it could have some fertilizers, it can have water in the soil, it could be a wet soil, so soil is a mixture. And wine is basically water plus alcohol, typically ethanol. So wine is also a mixture. So keep this in mind. A pure substance is usually a single element or a single compound. A mixture is the combination of multiple pure substances. If there's a lot of stuff in it, chances are it's a mixture.